Weeks, Wednesday, August 11, 2015. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. start off, uh, Dick DeRoche is from um, the Hampton Energy Committee, is going to give us a little update of what's going on in town. Uh, so if you're on, on right away. You know, appreciate yeah. My wife appreciates it. Uh -huh. Should I use this as well? Yes, please. Does it work? Yeah. Yes. I, I thought I would start out by kind of giving you a little idea who we are. Um, you know, unless you watch Channel 22 the first Thursday of every month, you're probably not familiar with the Energy Committee and who we are. Uh, I've been the chairman for yeah, six to seven years, something like that. Um, I hold a master's degree in engineering and master's in business. I spent 23 years in the Navy, retired as a commander, and 24 years in the electronics industry in a variety of senior management positions. And I'm absolutely broke. I have no money. Okay. Uh, Sorry. I also have five kids and ten grandkids. So we've been we've been a busy little that's family. Where your money went. Yeah, that's just right off my money. Sure. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, the vice chairman on the committee, Tom Withka, spent thirty five years in the utilities industry. Uh, his last position uh, with Unitil was as a managing director of one of their subsidiaries. Uh, Brian Betts is a systems engineer with Unitil. Uh, he was also, prior to that, a systems engineer with public service in New Hampshire. Uh, Irina Calenti uh, is a licensed professional engineer. And her expertise, uh, she's also our secretary, by the way, her expertise is in, in the leads, which is a system for bringing uh, buildings and constructions uh, into the green categories, energy saving categories. And actually when this building and the Uptown Fire Station were being built and designed, uh, we helped the then chief uh, with some ideas on, on how to make the facilities energy efficient. Uh, Julie Molinari, fairly new to the team, uh, is a financial expert. She has spent maybe 20 or 25 years uh, in financial management in various industries. And the last member of the team, uh, Tom, uh, he hasn't been too long. Anyway, he was, uh, he, he's a management energy consultant. Actually, he was one of the original founders of this committee some time ago. Uh, some of our activities uh, include bringing different people in to you know, give us talks and lectures on different aspects of energy. Uh, for example, when Peter Eggleston was uh, was planning the Smutty Nose Brewery over on Toll Farm Road, uh, Peter came in and talked to us about some of the energy saving capabilities he was putting into his facility. Uh, Mark Ritchie. Uh, who owns, if you're driving down Route 1 in Newburyport, you see this humongous uh, wind turbine up there. Uh, Mark Ritchie owns that. It provides all the energy and all the electricity for his company, which is right there at Epps on that site. We've had people in talking about nuclear power and a variety of different energy type subjects. Uh, over the last year, we've had several solar developers come in to talk to us, and I'll get more into that in a second. Uh, projects that we've done in 1999, no, excuse me, 2009, uh, I put together a project for the Lane Memorial Library. Uh, we replaced the boilers, we replaced the air conditioning chiller, we replaced many or a good part of the lighting on the, on the main floor of the library. Uh, we cut their energy costs by about 60 percent and they're still holding that. Um, in 2012, the town manager, Fred Welch, 
asked me to get the town into the wholesale electric supply market. If you look at your electric bill, it's in two parts. The supply of the electricity from, from a generator or generating source and the delivery demand, which we pay to Unitil because they own all the infrastructure in town. Uh, the delivery part, the Unitil part, is highly regulated, but the supply of electricity is not regulated. It's uh, very, very much a competitive business. So in 2012, uh, we, we brought on an energy consultant, energy broker, like a real estate broker, uh, and with us, he went out to the wholesale market and worked out a fixed contract, a three-year fixed contract for the supply of electricity uh, to the municipal buildings. Uh, to give you an idea, the town has 60 meter, metered accounts. The town, over those 60 accounts, absorbs or uses about 2.8, 2.9 million kilowatt hours a year. Now, your household, you know, if you're using 40, 50 kilowatt hours, that's, you know, a month, that's quite a bit. Well, we're looking at about, say, 2.8, 2.9 million kilowatt hours a year. We got a fixed price rate. By the way, half of that, 2.9 million, is absorbed by one facility, the wastewater treatment plant. That's a large account, it's a G1 account, uh, and we actually price that under a separate contract. Um, the contract that we had that we set up in 2012 was a fixed price of 6.78 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, if you look at your electric bill over the last several months, particularly the winter months, you were paying about 15 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, it's gone down to about seven cents right now. So we have, we've locked in 6.78 cents. For the wastewater treatment plant, because of the size of it and the, and the usage, we actually put together a program that was based on the market, the index in the market, just like playing in the stock market. Electric prices change every hour of every day. It just <coughs> continually rotates and continually fluctuates. And a lot of it is dependent upon the demand on the network. So we actually, with the wastewater treatment plant, we went into this market-based concept. Between, between the market base and the fixed price, we saved the town over the last 30 months $145,000 in electric costs. You budget committee guys, take note. That contract expires in September, this coming September. We recently negotiated a new price, a new rate, a new rate of 7.45 cents, which you won't see on your Unitil bill at all for that low price. But we negotiated that as a fixed price for all 60 accounts. That fixed price is good for 14 months. So it'll take us to November of 2016. Our plan starting in November of 2016, is to go solar. I've spent, we've spent, like I said, pretty much the last part last year putting together a solar project. And what we've ended up with, <clears throat> we submitted a request for proposal to seven different developers in the middle of July. I just got the proposals back at 3 o'clock this afternoon. We got two proposals out of seven. My quick look is both proposals are very good. They are definitely financially capable. So 
So we have we have two proposals to install a solar system in town. Now we're looking at a system that's large enough to supply all of the 60 municipal accounts. So in electrical terms, that's about 2.4, 2.5 megawatt system. It's a big system. It's going to take maybe 10 acres to put that up. There's one place in town where we can do that, and that's on the landfill. Most of the towns in New Hampshire are now installing systems of that size on the landfill. The concept that we're using, we're using two concepts I should explain to you. The first concept is net metering, and the con second concept is something called power purchase agreement. Okay. In net metering, if you produce, well, the energy, the electricity that you produce out of your solar system or wind system or whatever, that energy goes right into the grid. If you produce more electricity than you use, you get a credit. It's a net meter credit. Okay? Under a power purchase agreement, the developer that we're going to select, the developer will design, install, own, operate, and maintain the system probably for 20 years. There is absolutely no risk on the part of the town. There is no investment on the part of the town. Zero dollars that we're going to put into that system. At the end of 20 years, we can take it over if we want. But the developer will totally own that system. Free to us. How do they get paid? They get paid in two ways. They charge us a utility rate. And judging by the two proposals I got this afternoon, those utility rates will probably end up more than likely saving maybe $30,000 a year by going solar. Uh, they'll charge us a utility rate. They will also receive any credits. They'll receive net metering credits. Uh, there is something called a solar initiative tax credit, which is 30%, which is pretty significant on their taxes. They will receive that. And there's other investment type of incentive credits for going renewable energy that they will receive. So they end up getting all this money back. Okay. On our side, we will pay a utility rate, which again is, is going to be better than what we're going to be paying in the future. So we're going to save money from that. We will also charge the developer a lease rate for using the land and we will also receive a tax benefit for the equipment that they're going to be using. So again, the plan, we use a fixed rate with a third party supplier, which happens to Constellation Energy if anybody cares. <coughs> up until November 2016, at that point in time, our plan is to switch over to a solar system. That's about where we are. I have a question. What kind of tax benefit does a municipality pay? Um, you can receive tax credits on the use of equipment. There's a lot of equipment involved. We don't pay any taxes. But the company the company will. So well, the company was to receive right. yeah. they receive the tax. They'll, they'll receive the tax. What do we get out Yeah, we get paid the lease. A lower we lower get paid the lease. Right. Yeah. And uh, in New Hampshire, net metering, I thought, was only for residential. They do it for commercial. No, home. sir. No. Commercial, no? Um, net metering, net metering applies to any renewable energy system. There are limitations on the size of the system that you could use. New Hampshire had a limitation of 100 kilowatts. That has, that has changed. We are now allowed to install a, a one megawatt system on any single deeded parcel of land. Now I'm talking about we're going two and a half megawatt system. Okay. However, we're getting around that 
because the landfill site is divided into five separate deeded parcels. We will actually take the electricity out of the solar system and put it directly into the meters at the wastewater treatment plant and the transfer station. So by doing that, we negate the need to pay Unitil a demand and delivery charge because we now become the supplier to the, to the grid. Can I ask a question? Sure. If we decide to choose the first option, uh, Will we get the same tax benefits that you mentioned that the second option, the company would get the second option? What? Um, which options? Well, like you said, there was first options if we do it as a municipality. The second one is if we hire a contractor to take it over and do it. Um, the, we're, looking, we're looking at the project as really only one option. The developer owns and operates the system. Say, how do we choose this developer? How do we know this developer is going to be his business in, yeah. in 10 years? From now? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. We interviewed, and we spent the last year interviewing and talking to, I think, seven different developers. Okay. We submitted a very extensive proposal request okay. to those developers. And a proposal request was, was put together by my team. Uh, Mark Jarrell, the town attorney, and Christina Osman in the in the town manager's office. Okay. We have we have statements in there regarding bankruptcy. Okay. Uh, we have protections in there regarding insurance and all that. Okay. The two proposals that I received this afternoon. Uh, one is from a company called Sun Sun City. Yeah. Sun City is one of the largest solar developers in the country. Yeah, they're, they're basically based out of Santa Monica, California. That's their headquarters. And the second is New Hampshire's New Hampshire Solar Garden. Uh, their founder and owner lives in Stratum. They're a local New Hampshire company. They've been installing large systems in most of the towns. They're both very reputable, but we're going to vet them. We will vet, we will vet both, of those, both of those companies. I know, you know from, from the investigation we've done so far, I know they're both financially capable. They both have sufficient backing and investors to be able to install a $10 million system, which is what we're talking about. Yeah. My, my, my concern is, like I said, 10 years down the road, mm -hmm. about being feasible. Also, technology is going to be different mm -hmm. years down the road. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be able to up, upgrade the system? Mm -hmm. if, if so, who's paying for that? <laughs> and it's going to be that they're going to be that but put out for the 20 years in case they decide to leave town. Yeah, the, the town does require a bond, okay. and that's in, that's in the proposal request. Okay. Okay. They, the developer will own the system. So any maintenance, many upgrades, many technology changes belongs to them. Okay, so they can't come back in 10 years. They can't come back in 10 years and say, we need, oh, we need this and we ain't got the money. And that's correct. So if you want us to do what you got to pay. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I, I think I, we're I pretty well protected. Came from late. Uh, Dick is from the Hampton Energy Committee. Okay. okay. All right. So this is the town of Hampton. And okay. he's good enough to explain what's going on and if, if we can help in any way. But this isn't a, a village district project. I just want everybody to know that. This is the town of Hampton, like, yeah, which is all of us. I that. Yes. Uh, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. Now, one of, the, one of the options that both of the developers is, is going to provide uh, you know, as we get into the program uh, is some benefits and assistance to any resident that would like to install a solar system, either photovoltaic for electricity or hot water. So they'll, you know, they'll help you, they'll provide some benefits, I'm sure they'll provide some financing or whatever so, as, as we get into the program. But the additional system that we're putting in will supply the 60 municipal accounts. <coughs> My understanding, Dick, that Sun out west will install the system and finance the system in the homes? Yes. And they've been doing that, yes. Yeah. Is that likely to be something that could occur down the road? Yes. That's a that's a part of their proposals. Yeah. Is to off, is to offer those benefits to the residents of Hampton. 
as you know, as as more and more solar systems get installed, prices are coming down. The technology is definitely improving. Uh, both proposers have guaranteed me that the equipment, particularly the solar panels, are are U.S. manufactured. Uh, there's you know, other states have had problems with some foreign manufacturing. These are all U.S. manufactured equipment. I have a question for you. Uh, I know there was Warnock last year mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. talking about this very thing, mm -hmm. solar at the somewhat. Well, somewhat, yeah, the one from Sunday. Um, the final decision is it going to have to be on the Warnock or is it already on? It's, it's, do you have the authority to? Do you have to go to the select one? I mean, who, who's, who, who uh, pulls the trigger on this? I have as much authority as the town pays me. Which is zero. Zero. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, I understand. You know that. No, no. But so, so you, you have. No. You, I know you've been putting a lot of work in this. But who pulls the trigger? This like that? So yeah. yeah. What, what's what's going to happen? Well, number one, the Warren article that you're talking about, Steve, was Article 41, and Article 41 asked the town to approve a no-cost study. To develop the feasibility of putting a large system on the <laughs> landfill. <coughs> Fred asked me to go out mm -hmm. with a request for proposal to all the all the developers and ask that they do a no cost study. And I pointed out to him, you know, having been an engineer for forty plus years, I sure as heck wouldn't do a study of the landfill to determine feasibility for free, okay, for no cost. So I pointed out to him, the only way he's going to get no cost is for the Energy Committee to do it. So he agreed to that. But at the time that the Warren article was submitted and, and voted on and agreed to, we were well beyond that point. Well beyond that point. <coughs> there's there's two, two concerns, two questions that have to be answered regarding feasibility. The technical question is, Will the landfill support the weight? The landfill's covered with a big rubber men membrane. We cannot legally penetrate the membrane. And we have to have certifications from environmental, from EPA, and from DES, environmental services. So we can't penetrate it, so they have to put concrete blocks to support the system. So the technical question is, will it support it? it hasn't been answered yet. But whoever we pick as a developer, he's going to answer that question. And the second question was, is it economically feasible? Can we end up with a rate that's low enough to save money? And the answer to that is yes. Good. We proved that today with, with, their, with their financial proposals. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other questions? Uh, one, other, one other thing for the future. Phil Bean, this afternoon, asked me to start working on a project that'll take the waste that we send to Rochester or wherever we send it to turn the waste into energy. Towns are doing that. States are doing that. He wants us to start looking into doing that. Now, how do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had like three hours. Okay, to okay, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Work on that one. Let us know. come back and let us know, please. I, I have other things. I have seven thirty tea time tomorrow. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that's great, though. Thank you so much for all my of the pleasure. work that you do. Thank you. Have we got the odds? Cool. Visit the library. As a trustee in the library, everybody's got to visit the library. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Julie's here from the Hampton Chamber. Can you give us an update? Uh, no. Sure. Uh, Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl. So, all right. All right. Sure. Sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> I think so. Okay. You need a good. Hi, Cheryl. An update on Children's Week. That is a nice bed. No, it's not. Pay attention to the light. Sure. Well, we're just here, first of all, to thank the Hampton Beach Village District Precinct for supporting and underwriting this wonderful week for children every year. And we've made a lot of 
great plans. We think this year is going to be even better than ever. And I'll let Julie, Julie tell you about some of the performers, but first I'd like to thank some of our generous sponsors as well. Uh, the Hampton Beach Casino is our presenting sponsor. We also have the Hair Cuttery of Seabrook, Convenient MD Urgent Care of Stratum. And then from Hampton Beach, we have the Grandview Motel, the Kentville on the Ocean, and the Mainsail, Mainsail Motel and Cottages, that all of them are helping to make it possible. And Julie and I have been working on this since January. Would you like to tell them about the uh, sure. forms? Uh, we certainly also do not want to uh, forget the wonderful generosity of Uda, who every year has been wonderful. And if your child is part of the parade, and we certainly hope that every child in Hampton and the vicinity are, please come down to the State Park by 10 o'clock. And through Uda's wonderful generosity, every child can have a costume. So if you don't have a costume at home, and you want to be judged for a prize, and also every child get, receives a prize down at the stage, please stop by the New Hampshire State Park South. They now call all of this Hampton Beach State Park, and it does get very confusing, even to us. But Hampton Beach State Park South, where you have the Winnebago's and where all the cars go in and pay their $15, is where the parade will start. Uh, this year we've added uh, many different acts that we've not, well, I can't say we've not had before, because in the past we certainly have. Uh, we've had uh, Wayne from Maine. We're also adding, uh, again, with the help of uh, Diana from the Parks and Recs, uh, they're helping us from, I think I believe it's from 12 or 1 o'clock on... Uh, 1 to 4. 1 to 4 on Tuesday. We're going to start once again having a little talent show with the children. Now, the talent show used to be part of Children's Week for a number of years and then it, it kind of lagged in popularity so we're hoping this year that many people come and start doing that. There's also many acts that we've not had before, uh, Vicks and Sticks and um, anyone that wants to know anything can stop by the Chamber of Commerce and we certainly do have booklets called our calendar of events and we have a whole page. So if we would like to invite anyone in the listening area and beyond, if you have children or grandchildren, to come and join us next week. Uh, it starts at 10 o'clock with B.J. Hickman on Monday and will end with the parade and everyone receiving gifts on stage. Also, um, the Village District has done this wonderful coloring book, which we just think is absolutely awesome. And they have a coloring book and crayons for every child, and that's going to also be given away uh, next week on the stage. And we have kind of asked, and uh, she graciously stated she would help us, that Maureen Buckley would be our MC for uh, our uh, parade. So, and announcing all the winners. So, once again, thank you very much. Thank you. And just a quick question, is this on is the list of events on our website and on your website? Yes. All right, so it's on both. So it's, it's on both. Uh -huh. yes. And yours is? Dot com. Hampton Beach. Hampton Chamber. Chamber of Commerce. And Hampton Hampton Beach. Dot org. Right. Hampton Beach. Org. Yeah. So if anybody's yeah. watching wants to see the schedule of events. And we've been events. sending out emails frequently to remind people of it. And, and they can stop by, if they happen to be in the area, if they stop by the Chamber, we'll be very happy to guide them through. And don't forget Bucks Lagoon, free golf on Mondays from 2 to 4. You know, and new this year, too, the Sea Science Center on Wednesday is bringing out their 35-foot inflatable dinosaur that be on display from 10 to 2 with photo opportunities for the children, and they'll be giving out free coupons. 
So that's a good thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything. So, they, so the dates are from Monday to what? what are the dates? Uh, Monday the 17th through Friday the 21st. Okay. And thank you. Which is next week. Right. Yeah. Okay. John Kane, talk about past volleyball and new volleyball. New volleyball. <laughs> and movie night and everything, all the good things we're doing. Oh, great. Hi, John Kane, marketing director. Village District. Thank you, Commissioners, for having me. Um, I would just like to add on to one thing that um, Cheryl um, may have not touched upon, Julie. It's very important. We do the bumper sticker campaign, and the bumper sticker oh, yeah. campaign uh, needs to be in by Thursday the 20th, and we have two categories, up to eight, is it, or ten for the younger category? Eight. Yeah. Eight and then eight and over, and the winner of both categories wins uh, a bicycle, and the bicycles are over at the Chamber of Commerce, and the bicycles will be handed out uh, after the parade at the Seashell stage by the um, Miss... Uh, yeah, the last year. Year. The last year. Last year. Year. The last year. The last year. The last year. I just want to make me. a comment about the, the drawings. The, mm -hmm. They draw a picture for um, about the bumper sticker mm -hmm. and the empty pages that they get are in your office, that is the, so they can the kids can come in and get this paper and then and paper. also a, a copy of a bumper sticker, so they can use that as the model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I'll give you a tip: we need to see Hampton Beach kind of live because sometimes they do these fancy pictures, but you can't read Hampton Beach. So I'm just giving a tip to all the kids wow. out there. Evil. Make sure that you know we can prominently see Hampton Beach because that's the whole key of the bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for all your work next week. It is a very busy week for Hampton Beach. Uh, I haven't had a vacancy in 40 or 50 years, and I'm sure Mr. Rage is the same thing. People call in advance. Uh, it's, it's a great value. Hampton Beach is a great value. Everything is free all week long. So parents including can ice cream. including Ronald McDonald. McDonald and ice cream. Um, we're going to have a movie on Monday night, and that will be Charlotte's Web. Did That's I get it right? Correct. Charlotte's oh, Web. New, new or old? That's uh, it's an older one. Okay, yeah, that's like around. Um, Black and white. And that will be starting at eight ten. So uh, bring your chairs, your blankets, your popcorn. Um, we've been attracting crowds of five hundred plus on every uh, movie, so it's it's, it's been great. Um, and thank you, commissioners, for allowing me that large screen. Uh, upcoming, um, the, the summer's not over. We still got a long ways to go. Uh, this weekend, we are a uh, continuation of our volley t ball tournaments that we've had all summer long. They're put on by Matt Morrissey. Uh, he does a great job. He's out there at 5 o'clock in the morning digging holes for you know upwards to uh, 24 nets. Wow. This weekend is the high school, the first time we're going to have it, is the high school challenge. It's broken up into the north schools, which are basically New Hampshire and Southern Schools, which are a lot of the, uh, the Massachusetts. So this is new. Uh, the New Hampshire's almost filled. They're all slots. We're still looking for the Winnicott team. If you're out there and uh, you're on a Winnicott volleyball and you want a, some bragging rights, come on down and or sign up on HamptonBeach.org. There's a link right over to the registration area. Please do that. When is that, John? Um, that's this this week coming up now. No, the, the cost to the join and the prizes. Or yeah, there's there's medals and stuff like that. And there's what, a cost. What day though? I mean, that's going to be Saturday, the fifteenth. Um, in the morning, does it start? Yeah, off? it starts very early in the morning. You'll you will see them. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you can't miss it all. It was all junior high last week, right? Yeah. And then the families come down. They they put up the 10 by 10 tents. It's really a, a great family event for uh, all the kids and uh, people to watch. And the, and the young teenagers are really into it. they got the same glasses, same bathing suits, the stuff, the makeups, and the hand signals. Uh, so it's just not a bunch of kids just knocking around a the ball. They're, they're very much into this tournament. So uh, if you're walking by, stop and, and give them a, a cheer. The, um, the, again, we, we finish off with the uh, start of the uh, Children's Festival, which is great. And then next weekend, we will have the Hampton Beach 11th 
idol competition. Talent mm -hmm. competition. Talent yeah. competition. He, thank you. And um, uh, Glenn French and Maureen Buckley will be running that for the Hampton Maureen. Beach Village. Well, she, okay, Mario. <laughs> Glenn will be assisting. Glenn will be assisting. <laughs> Anyways, it, it's a great event. Um, the juniors are on Friday nights. The seniors will be on Saturday nights. And we um, will have the finals on Sunday night. We hope Channel 22, yes. Brian and the boys will also be there to yes. record us. Yes. Uh, that will be great. And it's a great event. And there's some excellent talent there. So... Uh, come on down and support everybody and, you know, give them, um, you know, an ovation when they do a great song. Um, after that, we are going to be having a spectacular fireworks display on the um, Labor Day weekend, and we're hoping everyone comes down that for that. Uh, Glenn's got some great concerts on Labor Day weekend. Um, and then we go into the Seafood Festival and... After that, we will be into the, uh, the fall events, and those will be the uh, Reach the Beach. And I see Smutty advertising nose. all over Smutty the place. Smutty Nose. Well, yes, Smutty Nose, the half marathon. Yeah. a big uh, brain, brain injury. Race brain after brain Reach the Beach. Reach the Beach. The yes. brain injury walk will also be there. Smutty Nose will also be there uh, again. So there's a lot of activities that we've got going into the fall. And then we have the Granite State Wheelman. So it's... You know, we don't stop after Labor Day. We keep on going to one of the better months in the um, in the season. I think is September. It's nice, dry weather is predictable, and uh, you know it's a little less crowded for that. But the restaurants are still open, so uh, we don't close down uh, after Labor Day. So it's uh, keep on coming to Hampton Beach and enjoy it. Any questions on any of the events? I want to give you credit for, uh, we had talked about some advertising in different areas, upstate New York, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and um, I've seen the ads and, uh, that you've been doing, and um, it's working. Thank so uh, you're doing a great job, and I want to give you credit for that. Uh, I don't think a lot of people in the district know all the extra work you do, and, and not just the marketing, not just... You know, the movie night, and going around with your camera, catching shots, putting all these, these uh, photos and everything on Facebook and our website, and uh, I want to give you um, a round of applause for what you Thank you very much. Uh, I do have a little bit of assistant with Facebook, and that's Lisa Martin now. Yeah, and she's uh, great. She's very, very good. She's talented. She's a uh, creative writer. She does the Hampshire.com. She works with the Union Leader and uh, 365.org. And, and you and her age, she can do the stuff better yeah, than you can yeah. <laughs> She's a little bit more on top yeah. of it than I am, that's, and that's really helped out. Our, web, our Facebook page now is up to over 26,000 uh, likers. And... Um, the moon picture, I don't know, just to give you how crazy this stuff goes. Uh, the moon, the, the, uh, the blue moon, I'm sitting on the front uh, porch with my wife, and uh, some of you know where I live, so it's, I get up and say, geez, i got to shoot this picture. And I go across, and I shoot from her bedroom, got the best view bedroom on the beach. Um, and then I walk up and shoot it and just throw up six pictures. 195,000 views. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. The post reach, we get a million that week for that whole week period. Wow. So, social media is a way to go. Our followers are women between the ages of 24 and 44, and that is our, my target group. They are the decision makers where the families are going, and we are family features, and that's what we like. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you want to talk any updates or anything? You're all set. Glenn, do you want to give us any updates or anything? Yeah, get up and say something about that. Um, get up and say something. Say something. <laughs> oh, there's a lot going on that you're involved in. And there is. Yeah. Well, good evening. My name is Glenn French. I'm the entertainment facilitator. I am um, involved in, in <laughs> Ring Master. Um, John has covered most of it. I... I uh, I'd like to blame Carol Shine Samard for the success of the uh, Children's Week. She was the individual at the chamber that kind of reinvented that event. So, Carol, it's all your fault. 
um, but the uh, events, including the parade, and and um, we've been doing Children's Week here for probably 50, 60 years. I I don't know when it was started, but Colonel Ashworth played a major role. Uh, and then it went along, and Carol kind of reinvigorated it with this with a three-day event, and then it became a four-day event, and of course now a week-long event. So, at any rate. Um, we will have a trailer in the uh, Children's Parade, uh, the old trailer that we've always had. It's been refurbished by Michael Buckley. It is a work of art. Uh, he has not signed it, uh, and, uh, which is unfortunate for him because most artists will sign the work when it's completed. And since he hasn't signed this, it means it isn't done. Um, and we have some new ideas for it too. But at any rate, it is completely reconstructed and it looks terrific. Uh, Depot Honda uh, is uh, likely going to provide me a vehicle to tow it in the parade. Uh, I beat Cindy Malu up again. <laughs> uh, at any rate, she's accustomed to me. Um, so uh, we've got that in place. Um, Channel 22 will be present to, to do our talent competition, which is uh, this weekend, but next weekend. So we've got a very full uh, program, as John alluded to. We have roughly 96 entries into the talent competition. Not all of them are complete. Uh, some of them are missing bits and pieces, and, and we'll have to refine those as we go along. Uh, but that selection committee will meet very soon uh, to trim that down to a workable number. Uh, but we've got some uh, fascinating talent. I am stunned with um, uh, the quality that we seem to attract. So, um, John, you did. You bought some advertising locally. I think it worked. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to measure it, to be honest with you, but I think it had an effect. Uh, overall, the nightly concerts are going well. Uh, no major bumps in the road, so to speak, but a couple, but we've recovered from them nonetheless, and uh, I think it's going well. Any comments? I think we need to thank uh, Brian Wilson from the state for his cooperation. Absolutely, yes. For, thank um, you for that, uh, Maureen. I meant to do that. Uh, the, the State Park, uh, Brian Wilson, and everybody over there has just been terrific. Um, as some of you may be aware, we have a parking problem on Hampton Peach. Um, and it doubles when you're trying to manage a variety of bands, anywhere from one to two people to 30 to 40, uh, creates a little bit of a problem. Everybody's been great. Brian and the guys over there have just been very helpful. Um, so we've been able and to... The gals. And the, and the gals, yeah, yes, I don't want to forget them because they're a part of it. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. <coughs> okay, we go to our old business. Anybody, uh, old business, Bob? Okay. Um, we've been, as a precinct, working on this flood insurance issue for, seems like, forever. And two of the three pieces are now in place. In March, the town voted to continue the proper ordinancing to remain in the FEMA flood insurance program. In July, the town, with our cooperation in terms of paying for it, has done a mailing to all properties that are in flood zones around the town. In September, we've invited and they will attend the town planner and the uh, conservation coordinator will be here to explain where we're at with trying to get into the community rating system, which is the third piece. And that's the piece where we can save a little money if we get into it. And we'd encourage anyone who has interest to come to the September meeting as the entry point is October. So it's right around the deadline. Uh, also cooperatively, we have paid half of the cost to get a grant from the Rockingham Planning Commission to make the uh, getting into this program more possible by the town. So I think this precinct is like a diamond. It has so many different facets. The obvious facets occur from like May till September. But all year round, there's all kinds of other things that the precinct gets involved in. And if you own a condominium, if you rent an apartment, if you own a business, this precinct had a lot to do with the fact you're still having your rubbish picked up. Uh, it's things of that nature. So it's an organ for a community, the beach community in particular, to reach the town 
and the people in the town through access to television and to pre present arguments concerning issues which we have an interest in. So there's just so many reasons to have a precinct. And the obvious ones, which work extremely well, occur from May to uh, September. But also remember, we can do a lot of other things positively for the community all year round. Thank you. I would move at this town, consistent with the presentation on precinct promotion, that we purchase a sign to acknowledge that the precinct is the sponsoring agent for those hundred concerts every summer. We now have signage that shows that we present the fireworks. And it would just seem appropriate if we could have a sign on the other side saying that we present all the concerts. Not that the people here will understand that, but that to the people who are visiting us from some other area. I mean, I was here, I've been here a long time, and I was here 20 something years before I knew that the precinct was paying that. I used to just pay that tax bill every year. <laughs> I don't know what I'm paying, but I'm paying it. And uh, so it, it does go, and it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it just to get, I didn't know in the beginning either. Right. That is one of the reasons why the new coloring book, if I may bring it up. <laughs> they're laughing at me because I'm very proud of this coloring book. The coloring book um, tells everything that the precinct sponsors in coloring book fashion, and it is dedicated to the Ham to the residents of the Hampton Beach Village District. Oh, the other way. I want to. If you want one, do let us know on your way out. We'll be happy to. Do you have some on top? Julie. I have a couple. All right, well, do you have some? I still have We'll make sure if you want one, you can have one. Yeah, and then we have some at the chambers, so yep. we're more than happy. So um, I want to just put out there, I, I want to look, I've been working a lot with the Hampton Beach uh, Commission, and we're doing a transportation study, and um, I want to look into some type of bus service. We really need, we've we'll been working on that, but by the time those studies get done and all of that, I like to decide we're going to do it and do it. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with the government, it doesn't work that way. So I'm, I'm going to just, I want to do some talking to Coast. Coast is, gets federal funding and state funding, and they're supposed to service all of the seacoast, and they do every single town on the seacoast, but Except. Hampton and Seabrook. And I don't, I, and we're... The towns have to buy into that. Well, yeah, I understand the town of Hampton isn't looking to buy into it, but maybe seasonally the village district could buy into it. So let's look into it. Obviously, we can't do anything you without... also talk to Jimmy Jalbert, C&J Transportation. <laughs> All right, well, you get me some phone numbers, but I'm yeah, putting that yeah. on you. Tell him, tell him I said so. Well, right. see, give us the phone number. Jimmy's old friend. All right, well, we'll work on that. I also want to uh, I want to take a moment of silence before we go to public comment, approval minutes and public comment, is we had an icon of Hampton Beach pass away. Um, he did a lot for the beach. Um, Mr. McGurk, or Bill McGurk, um, depending how you knew him. I knew him as a younger person, so I called him Mr. Uh, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a sad day for Hampton when we, lose, when we lose someone so important. So I'd like to just take a moment of silence. Thank you very much, and God bless the McGurk family. Yes. I want to approve a minutes on 610. I think the three of us were here for that. Is that right? It was one you missed. I was here. You were here for that. All right. so do we approve the minutes of, of uh, June 10th? I move to approve the minutes of June 10th as written. I second. All in favor? All right. Uh, the approval of minutes on July 8th. I move to approve the minutes as presented on July 8th. I'll second it. All in favor? I abstain. I abstain. 
Okay, we have some new faces here today, so that must mean we have public comment. <laughs> Anybody like to get up and speak? Hi, I'm Paul Raitano. Uh, my wife and I, Sheila, my wife Sheila and I, own uh, Six Fellows Ave. Um, I'm here to talk about the parking lot that's supposed to be going in. And um, uh, when we first bought our house back in January, we were told that the parking lot was going to be this, 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 and this. Since then, it's become a pigsty. Right now, there's no less than a case of empty cans strewn all over the parking lot. And I had at least 30 of them in my yard that Sunday. From Sunday, I went and I picked them all up, threw them in my trash. These things are still sitting there, and here we are on Wednesday. I was promised a fence. There's no fence. I was promised basic things, such as no driving on fellows out. The, uh, the cars were supposed to empty in and out of uh, Ashworth. No driver. It's a raceway. They come in off of Ashworth. They drive through. They get out to Fellows. They're running up and down Fellows Ave. And I can't understand why, at this point of the game, something hasn't been done. The building should be down this week, and the fence is going up right away. And uh, I apologize for it. It's all... Uh, a lot of technical stuff. It's not like you and I buy something and you just do it. But Chuck, I can understand that. I have no problem understanding that. Mm -hmm. I've been a businessman for a lot of years. What I don't understand is if you are running into problems tearing down the building, developing the site, why are you parking cars there? Well, we're trying to bring money into the village district to pay okay. for the for the, the lot. So it, it will be done soon. Here's another one for you. You have a sign up there, parking, village district parking. There's no attendant. So five, six, seven times a day, they knock on my door. Where do I pay the money? I'm going to start taking the money. And I'm, 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 I'm going to start taking the money. I'm not going to hear you. But, I mean, the whole, the whole bottom line is, Chuck, is that my wife, and I, my wife and I fell in love with this house. Yeah. You know, when we spoke with you at the end of the meeting, you promised us all this stuff. And nothing, nothing has gotten done other than aggravation, I mean, you got my email. I told you, they're they urinating there. They, one guy defecated in there. It's, it's ridiculous. They throw stuff. Oh, they, they eat, a, eat a sandwich. They throw it over my fence in my backyard. I shouldn't have to put up with this junk. Right. And we're, we're trying to work on it. And now I'm, 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 I'm on top of it. So, so are, we, are we talking another day or two? Are we talking another week or two? I'm hoping Monday that the building will be this back. This coming Monday, the staffing is under I'm hoping. That, that's the game plan. Okay, and are you going to get somebody over there to clean that place up? Yes. It's disgusting, Chuck. I mean, you drive by it. I do. You know it's all there. I just know, I'm, let me just say this. I do feel your pain. However, we've also been going through that because we have been trying to get this, this uh, the asbestos done in it, which was finally completed, correct? Yeah. It has taken us, between all of the agreements and all of the stories, it's, it's we've felt the same way. Yeah, but you have, to, you have to understand one thing. You live down the street. Chuck's not doesn't live anywhere near there. I'm a director butter. I look out my window and I see this crap. I understand. The other day, a guy gets undressed in the middle of the parking lot, all like he bare ass. Yeah. No, I do understand. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not questioning your problem. I understand it, but I just want you to know that it has been out of our control. What we have said we are going to do, we are going to do. Okay, but if I understand it's not out of your control. You shouldn't be parking there until it is in your control. That place should be chained off, and no one should be parking there until it is in your control. I mean, well, this is a residential neighborhood. And it doesn't seem like there's any concern for any of the neighbors. And especially me. All right, I'm a director. I, I look out my window at this parking lot. And I just I just think something needs to get done, or you need to chain it off and not do anything until it's until it does get done. And that's all I'm asking from the board. Right, well, it is coming down this week, so. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Hi, I'm 
I'm Kathy Silver from Blue Ocean Society and the Blue Ocean Discovery Center. Um, I hope those of you that are here had some cake. If you haven't, please get some before you leave. We had a, our big fundraising cruise last night, and this is cake that was donated. Um, I just want to really give a big thank you to the Wicked Sweet Sugar Boutique in Hampton. Daniel T Danielle Thibodeau, a former student of mine, um, owns this place, and she gave us the cake, cupcakes, cookies, whoopie pies, cake pops. I mean, just lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff, all just given to us. And it was very, very kind of her, and we appreciate it. So if you need a cake, okay, go visit Danielle. She's right on High Street. Can I interrupt uh, real, just real quick? Small business are the ones that do everything for people. And, they do. Um, these are people we have to support. We have to support the local small businesses. And uh, I think she does a great job. She does. We've got things there. And the reason that she was so willing to support us is every time we do a function, we go to her. And we, we make a big point of using local vendors, very much so. And so, anyway, have some cake. Um, I hope that many of you were able to see our inflatable whale ladder last Saturday. Okay, it was the um, State Park Pursuit Day, and we brought our life-size fin whale to the beach, and it was a, a big attraction. So I hope you were able to see that. Um, ladder will be around. Um, when we bring it to a building that we can put it inside the building, then you're allowed to go inside the whale. We couldn't do that on the beach because it was 120 degrees inside the whale. <laughs> but that's quite a treat to walk inside it because you see the ribs and the heart and the lungs and it's a great activity for kids. Yeah, we got a, a big grant to purchase that. Um, last time I was here, I told you that on the very next day, I was taking a school group to clean the playground and that I would tell you how many cigarette butts we picked up. The unfortunate news is 170 cigarette butts were picked up in, in the playground. Now, we have signage that says, no smoking in the playground. These high school students said to me that they felt that the signs were too small, they were too hard to see. So maybe we need to maybe look at that. But nevertheless, 170 cigarette butts in a place that people aren't supposed to smoke and that we are entertaining children, I think, is pretty sad. Um, we've talked about Children's Week. Um, we have a special event on Tuesday. We'll be um, bringing our touch tank animals from our Discovery Center over to the stage um, from 12 to 1, I think, on Tuesday. So come and visit us there. And, of course, like everybody else, we are looking forward to uh, the next few weeks and then the Seafood Festival, which brings me to um, basically my monthly <laughs> request <laughs> If you have ever wanted to volunteer but you have hesitated, please be aware that just like every other business at the beach, our workers, our interns, and our volunteers are now going back to school. So as a result, we are really understaffed now, like, like I think starting Monday, because all the colleges are starting up everybody has to go off to school. So particularly if you live at the beach, okay, so you don't have to con con be concerned about the parking issue, but if you live at the beach and you've already thought, gee, maybe I would like to just go volunteer, okay, we're, we'd be very happy to have you. Okay, so just a thought on that. <coughs> and like everybody else, we've had a, so far a very good summer. We have had more than 10,000 visitors this summer. So yes. Yeah. A lot, uh, I won't say a lot, but some of that are school groups, and um, many, of course, two and under don't pay, but that's okay. So we're doing, you know, we're very, we're feeling like it's been a good summer for us. So when you say you want volunteers, just people be clear. You're looking for anybody for two hours to 40 hours. Absolutely. So it's not, if you want to volunteer, you don't have to... You don't have to. Weeks worth certainly not. In fact, most of our volunteers volunteer 
two to three hours once a week. We teach you, you know, it's all about the animals, and you know, you can pretty much pick what you choose to do. You can do crafts with children. You can talk about marine animals, or, or um, every now and then we have ones who like to write on the sidewalk. So I share my chalk, and out they go. Um, so it, it's t totally up to you, but it's just. And everybody who does it says, oh, this is such a nice feeling, and the kids and everybody just love it. And it is. It's nice to give back. So if you are interested, just stop in and leave your name and address, and we'll be in touch with you. Okay. And one more one more thanks to good old Danielle. <laughs> Have some cake. <laughs> Where are the whoopie pies? I don't see any whoopie yeah, pies. Those go with the no, the they're at the Discovery Center. Oh, oh, so I, 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 see. The I see how it is. Yeah. 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 The cake pops like at the, the cake pops at I'll make this quick. I know people are getting antsy. Um, Linda Gebhardt, the Hampton Beach Village District Beautification Committee, is one of the hats I wear. I'm also the Vice President of the Hampton Arts Network. And we've been offering, um, the Hampton Arts Network has been offering art classes all summer, at least one or two a week, um, thanks to the generosity of Skip Windermiller, who gave us um, a shop to use. So in August 13th, we have, which is tomorrow, One Stroke Painting. August 20th, we have um, Zen Tangle, which is a pen and ink. I can give you one of these. And August 27th, we have watercolors, and there might be a pastelist that's going to come and um, do a, demonstra a free demo. So that's going on right on the beach. Um, and we like to make that available and let people know I have schedules if you're interested. Um, the demos are free and the classes are very inexpensive, um, $10, $10 and $15, which includes your supplies. So um, people can just come. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to go shopping. Just, just come. So we're trying to make art um, accessible for here on the beach for people to stop in. Um, and a quick thing about the beautification, um, those of you who come over the bridge, if you've noticed the Hampton Beach Village welcome sign at the South End Beach, using that correct terminology, South End Park Beach, um, that's all been planted with flowers. And it was really overgrown and clover took over and the beach grass that originally was planted there, I don't know how long ago, 25, 30 years, I don't, I don't know how long that those big pillars have been there, a while. So um, it really had become quite, quite a mess. So our target this summer has been to replant that so it's full of zinnias and really bright colored flowers and butterflies. So look, see, my first monarch butterfly, it's another report, um, they're, start, they're, they're in the area, so um, be aware. Big um, orange butterflies are starting. I, I've seen some in the garden. So, And the state is, if you have any questions, they're starting to, um, we've been going to the meetings, the uh, um, Hampton Beach Area Commission has been talking about um, improving the gateway, the southern gateway. So um, they've been starting, Ken uh, has, Mulberry has started pulling up the shrubs. So if you're wondering what's going on, they're in the process of taking out some of the old shrubbery, which has been very overgrown and was really filled with trash and bottles and really kind of unsightly. So a whole new um, planting is going to be going on at that southern entrance to the park. So just let you know that's what's going on. Um, flowers are doing great. Um, volunteers are out there watering in these very hot days. It's been tough keeping everything watered, so I was very happy to have the rain. I know it's not great for beachgoers, but we really needed some rain. And uh, that's it. any questions about anything? Okay. Anyone else want to speak? That's okay. She's got a big one. I'm like the worst public speaker ever. You are? Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead. I'll let you go. I just, we have, a, we have a problem with the fireworks at our end of the beach. That they block the ramp, completely block the ramp so nobody can get off the beach. Plus, they move everybody from the, the, stat, the, the um, shell all the way down to this past the statue and then block the ramp all right so they block the ramp for hours like hours i don't know how long it takes to set fireworks up in a truck and bring them over to the thing 
<coughs> it's like at least four hours, five hours. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of elderly and handicapped people that try and use that ramp. Like, my knees aren't the best. Right. Um, I need knee surgery. Plus, they've parked five cars there. Does anybody see the cars parked on the sand there? Yeah. Is that not a problem? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking, like, it's a problem for me to walk by, but it's not a problem with five tankfuls of gasoline on the beach. Well, un unfortunately, I, I, I talked to Christopher Wyman. He's, he's the uh, state of New Hampshire fire marshal. So yeah. I, after I got a few phone calls from everyone, uh, I, I looked into it, and... Um, he gave me a link, which I can forward to you, Okay. Uh, of all the different things. They are not little fireworks. They are explosives. And the state no, fire I marshal... I see them. But the state fire marshal has set up a, 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 um, a system of exactly what they want. And, and the fireworks company is has to do it that way, or the fireworks can, cannot go off. Um, the tides, the way the tides come in to Hampton compared to other places, uh, I, I did a lot of research on this, so <laughs> um, moving it out onto sea or doing something like that isn't feasible for Hampton. Uh, this is what the Even fire marshal wants. Who else has it? Salisbury has it. it it's, Seabrook has it. York Beach has it. This is what they say for Hampton. Everybody so. but Hampton? Okay. Right. This okay. is what I'm telling you what the state fire marshal is talking about. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. Looking at different areas, this is the area that they that, that works. This is the area that's been going on for forty years. No, I I, I I have no. been here for over forty years. Yeah. I'm sixty two years old. I've been here probably sixty two well, years, and you never close that whole thing. They never close the whole thing. Now they have to the close it thing. according to the state fire marshal. So I can send you that link. Why can the cars go on them? Because they're they're from the company, they're 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 setting up and they're doing. So you're all right with five cars of gasoline just blowing up if something yeah, goes wrong? You know, it's nothing. It's nothing that I'm all right with. It's it's we're just following our rules, the rules of the state fire marshal. So I'll send the link to you, and I'll actually even send you his um, his uh, contact information. We, you know, we, we we do it one day a week, and it's. it's and, yeah, the, the, the concern that we have is is, is it, it's put up like around four o'clock to four thirty. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. People are still on the beach. Um, I've seen it myself where we've had a, a lady, uh, one of one of these person's relatives, with a broken leg and a cast on, being rudely grabbed and told to go over to the other side. We've had uh, nothing but rude. I can't understand as me myself why four thirty. They don't go off till 9.30. They have, like she said, they have gasoline right next to it for the whole thing. I don't understand why they cannot leave three feet open till 6 o'clock to let the people off and then do it. In the past, I, I've only been, I live on Highland Net. We've only been here three years. In the years that we've been here, this is the first year that they blocked it off completely. This has never been. People, the elderly, never, the elderly ever, ever people been. use okay. that ramp because they have a hard time climbing stairs. I understand, and, and I feel bad about it, but it's every Wednesday at 4.30, if you know this, you have to make uh, you have to make concessions to know that I have to be off that beach at 4.30. I, you know, it, it, needs to, it needs to be Can followed. I Can't they move them further down to the casino area? That ramp was, I checked into this as well, and the ramp, that area was purposely built for that reason. Now, there have been people that have been here for years, and it's been like that. They, they purposely, that's why they have access. That's beach access for the, okay. for yeah, well, the uh, trucks themselves. Well, yeah, the, the, the trucks can get on the beach and well, drive down on the south side and the other side by the casino. Over the so years, they've and, actually and they can drive cars down on the beach. They can take fireworks. the fireworks and drive it and put it down fireworks. on the other side of the beach. So You're my, talking about moving the fireworks or moving the trucks? Moving right? the fireworks down to the other side they down by the casino. Do that. Now, looked now, into it and had the other ramp area. Drop back on the chutes. We, we cannot do four inch anymore. We're okay. doing threes. This is all regulated by the state fire marshal, and it's way overrided. We have nothing to do with it. It's all regulated as how far back the people are from, from the, the shoot area and how big the shells can be. Uh, I know Chuck's been into it for quite a while. Uh, we did it before that. Um, we used yeah. to have bigger shells going up. Yeah. I can certainly get the shells. I can certainly see the ugly trying to get up and off the beach. 
Okay, okay. so, yeah. you know, they, no they offense, but it doesn't really... Years and years, and then this year, with the, do we have a new fire? No, it's not. Fire, no. The only fire thing that has company. changed is when the new construction, they created that new ramp mm -hmm. for the purpose of getting on the beach. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only thing that's changed. Other than that, it's been the same. The so no one has the ramp. Because that ramp has been the beach, open is there, is right it, up until the fireworks. That raft's been open even when the fireworks are going on. Yeah, I know that. My, I've experienced that, experience that myself. Well, I know one thing years. the fire marshal wouldn't allow. If you've got a truck full of explosives, you don't want people within two feet walking down a bed. No, I get that, but I don't Because that's why, that's why I say they don't show up until later so on. Is, is this beach is closed off at 430, and these guys just don't show up till later. They're, they're not there at 430. It, it definitely is a, a job and a half trying to get people off the beach. People don't listen, People so they need to start early. Now the question being, is there, if we looked into and talked to Senator Stiles or something like that, is there a, something on the other side? Is it just that you need a ramp? Well, is there something personally, that I don't. Have? Okay. No, I understand I, it, but, but is it? I witness, and the, I, these guys are rude too. Right, and, okay. I, and you know, and I've talked to them about We've that. Met with they push people. They push. I didn't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the the about the fireworks people. Chuck, I've them. talked to them about they that. Will they will certainly are. They will certainly are. But let me just let me just finish. I've talked to them about that. I told them not to talk to anybody if there's an issue. Hampton Police and Hampton Fire are going to talk to who's ever there. So okay. that that that's the new plan. All right. After I get the emails, I. I don't want you to think we're not we're ignoring it and everything else. No. I got emails back and forth from the fire marshals. I've been talking to different people. The next question I have, because we want to work with everybody, is is there a something on to the left uh, to the I'm sorry, to the north of that area that there's there isn't a ramp that maybe we could have a ramp installed for future uh, so that you can say on Wednesdays, I know every Wednesday I'm not going to go to that ramp. Maybe I can go to a different ramp. That, 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 that'd be fine. Okay, right. that, would, that would be fine. But, the, but like I said, our concern has been, it's, it's always been status quo, and then all of a sudden it's not. And then, and then when we ask some, something about them, we're talked to like with some kind of an animal. Or we're told, more like, I go to sleep. Okay. No, as soon, yeah. as, I, as soon as I get called or... And um, emailed, uh, we got on top of it. So we want to work on it. But right now, right now, there's nothing that we can do about that space. But maybe we can have a solution for something in the future. I mean, we're already mid-August, um, right. and talking to the fire. I'm telling you, I talked to the fire. I emailed him. I talked to him, uh, and he he forwarded me a link, and I can send it off to you, anybody that wants it. Um, this is the rules. This is how we do it. And they're doing everything correctly, and I said, "Well, I will pass this on to the, to, to the residents, and maybe we can come up with a solution." Okay. So, I don't want you to think we're just throwing it under the rug and we're going to ignore it. But maybe you have a solution to say, north of that, there's another entryway that we could hang out at on Wednesdays. We can maybe you know, or something like that. If, if there was a ramp or something to make it accessible. All right. I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't yes, really. It does make sense. All right. Okay. I just wonder if they've changed the safety distances. <coughs> I'm sure he has a list. He has a list a mile long of what they want, and that's it. And I said, well, is there any leeway? This is the list. This is fire safety. When we're talking about safety, uh, there's no room for. Yeah. And, and when you when you talk to anybody in the fire industry, mm -hmm. they'll tell you this, they, they go right by the line on it. Yes. Can I ask you about the times? What time are they supposed to Thank close you. it off? Um, I believe 4.30 okay. is the time they're because supposed to be. I, That's what the sign is. The sign is 4.30? And, and I talked about that. Okay, I, I'd like to address that. I, I um, We had a meeting with them, and we talked about that kind of um, behavior. And, of course, you know, it's he said, she said. And, I'm, and if it happened, I, I apologize to you. That certainly isn't something we ever wish to see. However, um, I think that was a job for a policeman. Yeah. If well, that were my mother, my aunt, or me, trust me. Yeah. He said there's a policeman over there. I said, would you please go get him? And he said, no, he blocked away. And I needed to go get the policeman. Well, I assure you, after we have met with them, that there will be, that is exactly what will happen. Well, that if there's a problem, and there's an argument, so. there'll be a policeman standing there. So anytime before 4.30, you can leave and go up that ramp and get off the beach. Yeah. 
any time before 4.30. Yeah, it's clearly in the night. You know who's clearly teaches the lifeguards. Yeah, so it, it's the lifeguards are the ones, and we talked to them today, actually. John and I talked to them. So the life the lifeguards are the ones that are playing on the beach and stuff. So uh, the you have a lot of tourists though that are. I live right there, so I see this. You have a lot of tourists there. They be down on the beach. They don't know this four thirty thing. So they're down there. They took them. We have twenty minutes. signs at it. They took them twenty minutes to get down because they've got, uh, you know, knee problems because they're old or something. So now they're trucking out there and they're trying to go through that little space that we used to always have. And they say, no, you need to go down to that next opening. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've got, you know, 80-year-old knees that aren't working correctly, and they just say, no, down there, that's it. Now, when did this begin? When did you have this problem? Just recently, or? Yeah, it's all the time. No, no, no since. It was always an opening, a little bit of an opening. Together. All summer. So, um, basically, you are aware that it's been going on all summer, that this, it's been blocked. And... It's been erratic. No, it wasn't blocked. It wasn't blocked in the beginning of summer. Yes. It would have to be. Yeah, it was. They're not yeah. just going. They're not going to change it yeah. in midstream. There must have been a rule. Believe me, by the fire marshal again that says you have got to do this and so because we can't have the fireworks without doing what they tell us. Yeah, uh, we're just aware that other places do it in a boat off the. You know, we try to do that. Can you speak up? We were going to put fireworks on a barge yeah. and drag them out to the ocean. <laughs> and we were going to load tell you why you can't. go into the harbor, load the fireworks on the barge, and then tow it out. The problem is you can't go under the bridge with, uh, with explosives. <laughs> so that's why we can't. That's why we can't do it. There's something about the tides as well. The but the bridge is you can't go under the bridge. The tides, you're not going to get a barge yeah. swinging in there. I Plus, one of the reasons, too, I believe, and I, I'm just assuming this, I don't know if it's really fact, is that Salisbury and Seabrook do not have the size beach that we have to do this. Yeah. They don't, and some of it's private, so they don't have, they cannot possibly put it on a beach. And I think that's another reason why. Most of Seabrook is all private. Right, and, and Salisbury doesn't have enough beach. You need at least 200 So, feet. we are working on it, and if you have any ideas or suggestions, you have my email address, because mm -hmm. I got emails, so... Uh, let me know. Okay. All right. And, and we did spend, I have to tell you, we spent some serious time, all of us, on this issue, trying to figure it out. And basically, we were told by the fire marshal, this is what has to be done. And you, you've got to bear in mind, all of this is occurring on state property. Okay. Neither the town or the precinct have jurisdiction on this property. They own the dance floor. And the only way you're ever going to dance is totally complying with their requirements. I would think, though, they have a Hampton policeman there just to make sure everything is going do. okay. There's usually uh, at least two them. policemen. There's always at least two policemen and two um, yeah. firefighters, at least. Yeah. And the policemen are usually on the, on the scooters running up and down telling people to get off the beach. And, and if you have a problem, dial 911 too, just like we've told the people working for the fireworks company. There's an issue. Just ask. If there isn't a policeman right beside you, just dial 911. They'll send somebody. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. We're here, and I, and I stress this, we are here to make Hampton Beach the best beach around. And I think we're, I think we're doing a lot of that. And unfortunately, there's a, always a little bumps in the road, and we'll try to work. And change is the difficult, especially if you said you've been there for many years and it's been a certain way. And I do understand how that can be a problem. But again, we have no choice in the matter. We really don't, as far as what's going to happen. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Would you like a piece of cake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a piece of cake. Maybe you'll feel better. <laughs> I want to thank Channel 22. And we're going to close the meeting. Unless anybody has any comments. Uh, there is certainly a lot of expression of freedom of speech tonight. And that's how it should be. <laughs> Close the meeting at 647. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you.